What's up guys, I'm going to unbox and review this new Wi-Fi 7 router by TP-Link. This is the Archer GE650. I'm going to do my full-on speed test range test using my following Wi-Fi 7 devices. I also have the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which is a Wi-Fi 7 device, but not quite as fast as these two. So I mainly just use these two, and I made a separate video comparing the speeds, so I'll link that down below. But this thing is supposed to be a really good router. This is basically the younger brother of the GE800 that is a phenomenal router phenomenal let the games begin so this being a gaming router gives you some advantages for gaming however it can be used just like a normal router in fact gaming routers just like gaming computers are typically more powerful versions so don't necessarily have to buy a gaming computer to use it for gaming but if you do use it for gaming it's good for that as well so the router should be pretty similar to that. So we're going to have some LEDs. I'll show you guys what that looks like. And we have several ports. So we basically have up to 5 gig internet speeds. And then we have a 5 gig LAN. So I can actually, my internet speeds happen to be 5 gigs. So I could go in at 5 and come out at 5. And this will go to my switch. And then these three are 2.5 gigabit ports for other stuff. We have a USB 3.0. You could share your hard drive. So we have the sync WPS button. We have the LED on and off button. We have the factory reset power, power on and off. And uh, the bottom, there's some vents and um, some vents on top and LEDs kind of all around that, again, I'll show you. Got some info and a quick install guide, basically. So the power supply is 100 to 240 volts and the output is 39.6 watts. We got a CAT6A Ethernet cable. And this is for the factory reset. So I got a chance to play with this thing, ran it as my main router for two to three weeks or so. And it was solid, no drops, something like that. Everything was smooth, fast, and incredibly fast, I should say. And I'm gonna show you guys, um, cause it was so fast that I'm like, I have to record a separate video just to show how fast it is. So I have it connected, I do a speed test. I'll show you guys that uh, very, very shortly. So. We'll start with internet speed test now. As you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So whatever you're paying for to your ISP or internet service provider. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. And this just so happens to have those five gigabit ports. However, when I do a speed test, I don't quite get to that five gig number. I get to 4.7, um, mostly in the 4.7 area. I saw 4.8. Um, but it was mostly in the 4.7 gigabits. Now, um, just pointing that out, it's not like I could, you know, when using it, it's not like I could really see a difference when I'm at 4.7 or 5, um, but just being as accurate as I possibly can. Now, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story, and again, as I mentioned earlier, the iPhone is not as fast, so I did test with the OnePlus 13 and the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Internet speed test down was 3.65 basically, and up was like 2.2, 2.3 basically. So very, um, overall, very good speeds. Now, to find the true performance of this router, I need to do a local speed test. So I basically make my computer into the server, and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. This way, I'm no longer relying on the public speed test server, which a lot of people and or companies can be using, nor am I relying on my ISP. So, looking at these numbers, I don't think I've seen speeds like this before, and I retested it a few times just to make sure. And um, I kept getting speeds very close to this, and... I'm gonna show you guys that video that I'm talking about right now. This router is incredibly fast at short distances. So if you're obviously very close to it, it's gonna do really, really well. Now, I moved the router here just to demo it, just to show you guys the server and the TV and the phone and everything in the background. Normally I wouldn't put it here. And, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate I mean, we got 4,600 down megabits per second and 4,098, almost 4,100 up. So yeah, this is, I think, the fastest, I, I can't remember, if, I mean, I would need to double check, but I think this is the fastest router on a local speed test that I've ever seen, um, which is crazy. Uh, so very, very good from that aspect. Now we get to range test. Now range will vary drastically by location. So from between floors, thick walls, all of that stuff can negatively impact your range. So essentially more obstructions typically equals less range. So at 20 feet away inside my place, massive drop, still very, very fast speeds, but it is a massive drop 
um, literally being 20 feet away. And at 50 feet away, even a more of a massive drop. However, I am outside now, so do keep that in mind. And then more of a drop, obviously, at 100 feet. This is literally me across the street, and it's still pretty usable speeds. I mean, these are still some pretty good speeds. Now, when I saw the initial speeds of like, I can't believe I'm seeing these speeds and let me retest it and let me actually make a video showing that I'm getting these speeds and then I do the range test I was like oh the range on this thing is gonna be crazy I'm like I'm gonna get over a thousand on the hundred foot um, the 30 meters basically and uh, no I got like 500 something so um, so the the strength of this router really is it's it's very, very fast when you're close to it, and obviously the further away you get, which is the same for pretty much every router, but this one kind of falls off a little more quickly, um, so keep that in mind. But, phenomenal router, especially for the price. So, next we get to uh, setup and configuration. So, for setup, you use the Tether app, and um, TP-Link does a pretty good job of cleaning it up, and they don't give you as many options as ASUS, like ASUS has a ton of options, but TP-Link still has a decent number of options, more than you would get something with like an Eero router or something like that. So, and I'm turning around just so I have some of my notes here. Um, but basically, you get the parental controls, um, so that is including the price. Now, they do have more advanced parental controls, but that does require a separate subscription. Yes, you can control the RGB lights. Now, I should mention that in the beginning of the video, I said lights all around, but when I was actually testing it, and I was just assuming that because the G800 does have lights on the sides and stuff as well as the front, but this one, the lights are just in the front. So it's just right here and just right here. So... There's no other um, LED lights. For some reason, I, I thought like, oh, there might be an LED hidden over here. Um, then when I looked more closely, I was like, oh, maybe it isn't. And then obviously when I tested it, it didn't show up. So keep that in mind. But you do have all these patterns with the RGBs you could do. So separate different patterns. You could do the intensity. You can do the frequency. So there's a decent number of customization. You could also keep it at a solid color. So there's a lot of color choices as well. Then we get to the main stuff with SSIDs, which is basically your Wi-Fi name. So, and I should mention if you're replacing your existing router, you could technically just use the same Wi-Fi name and password. And they're both case sensitive. Um, and then your other devices should automatically connect to this one. So, um, but you get your main SSID, which is your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And then there's a separate 6 gigahertz SSID, which is what I did what my most of my testing with. Uh, was the 6 gigahertz and and you can also do a separate MLO multi-link operation network which is which I imagine would be just as fast as the 6 gigahertz but I have noticed in the past with other routers as well when I tested with MLO and I tested with the 6 gigahertz it's pretty much been the same um, and sometimes the 6 gigahertz is even a little bit faster um, you can also set up a guest network. You can make a separate IoT network, Internet of Things. So if you have smart home devices like smart light switches and you know smart plugs, things like that, um, you can have those connect to a specific IoT Wi-Fi. It also works with Easy Mesh. So if you got one and you're like, okay, it's actually pretty good and I'm golden, it's very very fast up close. Uh, but if you get one and you're like, okay, it works really really well as long as I'm close, but if I'm a couple rooms away, it's not working as fast as I want it to, then you could get another one of these or another router that supports Easy Mesh, and then you can actually use them in an Easy Mesh network. And it also has VPN options, so you could you could set up a VPN directly on the router, so all traffic going through it would be more secure uh, going through a VPN. If you have speeds basically less than five gigs, this is definitely worth a look. It's very very fast. Really, the only thing um, worth noting which I mentioned already was that the range kind of falls off more quickly um, because based on the close range speed test that I was doing I was like this is insane it is so fast it, I was genuinely surprised that I literally <laughs> recorded that uh, I kept doing the test I'm like I, it keeps doing it it's not like this one time it's like no it keeps doing it uh, I even moved locations uh, where I normally don't put the router, just to, and I did a speed test there, and it was still doing it. I was like, oh my god. So, very, very fast overall. Um, uh, but yeah, 
Uh, other than the range, um, and range was st still might be okay for you. Again, it still did pretty good overall, but I mean, it's not like I was honestly expecting range to do better based on its like beefy performance up close. That's that's all I'm trying to say. Um, but if you were to get this and you're like, oh, like range isn't as good as I wanted to, well, it is an easy mesh network, so you could actually just get another one of these or another router that supports easy mesh, and that should resolve the issue in most cases. So. With that, yeah, very beefy, very fast, a lot of fast ports, RGB customization, uh, and a decent number of options in the Tether app. And you can also check out the web interface app as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Way more routers coming up, just so you guys know. Smash the subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.